few months ago on the program, we met Christopher Porter, uh, who was uh, campaigning and running for office in the federal election on behalf of the Canadian Action Party. It was an interesting discussion, uh, some different perspectives on some national issues. Uh, Mr. Porter, of course, uh, didn't ultimately win uh, win the riding. Squimalt Juan de Fuca, uh, the uh, the New Democratic uh, candidate, carried the riding. It's, uh, Canadian Action Party is still active. You're still the uh, the leader of the party. Yes, I am. Um, how uh, how do you feel? Let Let's look back first before we uh, talk about uh, today's issue. If you how, how do you feel about the way the uh, the election turned out, the way it went? I enjoyed the process. It was a eye opening experience to get into the democratic uh, circle here and participate in it. I uh, always stood on the sidelines and ignored it for the longest time till last year. Then I got active and then ran, and I'm um, preparing to run for the Toronto by election as well. So it was a great. Uh, step up uh, experience i enjoyed meeting the people i was shocked meeting the people i was shocked at some of the issues they brought up and some of the uh, smaller issues that they brought up compared to the huge issues that are facing canada as a nation and the reason i'm running and the reason i'm the leader of the party I- do you intend to relocate to Toronto? Uh, uh, no, because I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm realistic. I'm not going to win the riding of Jack Layton. You know, I'm not uh, going to do that. But it's going to give me an opportunity to secure the party, to show that we're real, to show that we're active, and to bring monetary reform and our parliamentary reform and other policies into the arena and uh, get a groundswell from the grassroots is what we need to change Canada here. That that has been, that was in the campaign and uh, has been one of your, uh, if not the chief issue of the of the party. It's Monetary the, uh, reform and sovereignty is the two main issues that we see a direct need for. It's uh, the party started in 97 with Paul Hellier, who thought we were losing Canada. Now we're at the stage now where we're saying we think we've lost it so let's get it back and uh that's why we think it's important for us to be present and that's why i'm going to run in toronto and uh make sure that uh, the message is heard okay tell us once again what what uh, what, what what is monetary reform from your perspective and particularly given global economic conditions right now what what are the uh, particular uh, implications how important an issue is it well canadians have to remember that uh, in august 15th 1938 we nationalized the bank of canada so that means we as canadian citizens own a bank currently our governments since around the 80s have stopped uh, started in the 70s started stopped uh, using our national bank of canada and started relying more on the private banking corporations to the tune of now $165 million of interest every day Canadians must pay to private banking corporations. Compared to going back to utilizing the Bank of Canada to become the People's Bank and to be used as the bank for the benefit of the people. Uh, we, we could be, we, the state. The, the yes. country, the provinces, it could be borrowing money from the Bank of Canada rather than from private lenders, is what well, you're arguing. I, exactly. As we know, money is created through your guarantee that you're going to pay it back. It's created out of debt. It's not a positive flow. It's a debt flow economy. And we say, we promise to pay this back, and the banks are allowed to produce this money that creates this, this stimulus. So we can choose to go to the private banking corporations, and they have a place in speculation and investments in the private sector. But for government activities, we're saying, you know, instead of giving them the business, let's give us the business. And at the end of the day, any interest pay is for the benefits of Canadians. And we start putting some money back into the infrastructure projects instead of relying on the sale of our natural resources in order to build infrastructure projects. And we're just saying, let's get back to building an infrastructure for the future generations of our children that doesn't come at the loss of natural resources. Yes. All right, so... The Bank of Canada, which doesn't actually have money, uh, would would simply would simply print money. Well, it's not uh, about printing money. It's about uh, borrowing the money from the the Bank of Canada. Uh, re- the Bank of Canada Act allows 
uh, the federal government to borrow money from the Bank of Canada. Well, where does the Bank of Canada get it from is what I'm saying. The same way the private banks get it. Both banks get it from the same way. It's from your guarantee that you're going to pay it back. So you're both going to get it from the same place. So if we utilize, this is, the Bank of Canada was used in the 30s. It was used to build, get through the Depression, prepared us for the Second World War, built the Trans-Canada Highway, built our health care system. It's already been proven. We've just forgotten to use it again. We have to remember that we used it. We have to remember that we created this great country called Canada that everyone wants to come to. We created it through the Bank of Canada. We must remember that and we must go back to that because we're heading to somewhere that's uh, a little dangerous and isn't very a bright future for our children. Yeah. Your, uh, I, if I accept your figure, $165 million a day in interest payments for our national debt yes for, uh, that that collective national provincial uh, public debt in canada yes. okay if I, if I accept the accuracy of that for, for the moment i do uh, you you advocate that uh, that through uh, borrowing from the bank of canada instead of private lenders uh, we would put that interest to public good, or you would advocate that the Bank of Canada, because it is owned by the public, would loan it at uh, lower or potentially zero interest? And exactly, to municipalities and to provinces for infrastructure projects. And, and so we're not sitting there trying to brainstorm how we're going to get the funds. We, we, let's stop paying the interest to private banking corporations. Let's start utilizing that money for our betterment. And... As a Canadian, I don't see anything wrong with that. And especially when I talk to elders that have gone through the Depression and through the Second World War and said, we did use the Bank of Canada. This is how we were able to do it. This is what happened. We went away from having statutory reserves in our society. So the banks don't need to have the money in the, the Bank of Canada anymore. Yeah. How... Uh how organized is uh, is the Canadian Action Party at this time? Organized in spirit uh, from since we were all organized in 1997. We have uh, just got a, a new revitalized uh, national executive because of the election. The party was near being uh, extinct, um, you know, about a year and a half ago. And um, a lot of people have come into back into the party. A lot of or supporters have come back because they see the state of Canada. And you remember the message of Paul Hellyer, which was our deputy prime minister during Pierre Trudeau, and remember him talking about this and remembering the concept and saying, you know, Maybe it's time we go look back at that solution. So we have a huge groundswell, um, and lots of people are stepping forward to help us, and it's an exciting time. Yeah. I, in, in a practical sense, I'm, I'm getting around to the, the, the message that you're offering us this morning is not one guy on the West Coast. No. Uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is across uh, Canada. We, we, we've actually uh, received from CAP head office uh, yes. you know, a news release uh, you, so the party exactly. is doing some ongoing things uh, oh, to try certainly. and maintain some profile in the public mind and our national uh, convention is uh, um, in August we're going to coincide it with the Bank of Canada's birthday we need to remind Canadians that hey this is our bank's birthday which is August 15th we're heading towards a national convention the party is growing in its membership and it's getting and as I said we're preparing for a very strong by election in Toronto, Danforth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, finances are in what sort of shape at this time? Well, it's party finances. The party finances is is the parties prepared for the by election, and you know this the the forward movement of our party has to be the participation of the people in the protection of their sovereignty. This isn't a vision that will get bought in Canada. We've already gone through that uh, period of time. This is a vision that Canadians stand up for their rights and stand up for what's best for their kids' future. And that is priceless. And for that, I believe in the Canadian public. I've met many great Canadians during the uh, federal election, and I look forward to Toronto. I think it's going to be an exciting time. All right. Chris Porter is leader of Canada's, uh, well, the Canadian Action Party. Uh, which we would, uh, uh, you guys were the, I, I guess, the fifth party in in numbers. Yeah, I mean, not first. <laughs> we weren't the majority, and we're not the majority. 
Well, it, it, generally speaking, a quick quick comment before we go to break on, on the outcome of the election. Are we, are we, is, is it good for the country that we that we got a majority government after? Well, uh, you know, I minorities? think we have to think of this in this way. We di- we didn't have a majority of the population voting. So, do we really have a majority uh, of representation of the will of the people? No, we don't. We have a majority of the amount of people that voted in the numbers and the stats and the bingo calling worked out that they're called the majority. But we didn't get the majority of the population voting. Once we get at the majority of the population voting, then I'm interested to truly talk about the true dream. Visiting with Canadian Action Party leader Chris Porter uh, on the phones. Uh, Ed in View Royal wants to have a go at you, sir. Good morning, Ed. Hi. Uh, well, I'm glad someone's finally coming out with uh, some sense on the way the money supply works. Um, there's just so much misinformation about there, uh, out there about where money comes from and, and, and how it should be used. What people don't realize, and I, I, I gather your guess does, is that all money comes from basically nowhere, just like the runs in a game of baseball, uh, you know, come from somebody crossing the line. But the number up on the board is just a record record of all the people who have crossed, you know, rounded the bases. Same thing. Money is just a number that represents the wealth of the society and a person's share or claim on that wealth. And uh, the banks, when you go borrow money, they they don't find the money somewhere and then give it to you, they create it out of nothing. Um, I think it would be much more sensible for the federal government to do the creating money uh, because it would be under better control of the people. Uh, okay. You, you, uh, you agree with Chris? Did, did you vote for him? I, I see you're in his writing it. Well, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an NDP supporter, and I'm working within the NDP to try and bring uh, this to people's attention. There's a whole new modern school of economics called Modern Monetary Theory, which uh, outlines and details this and shows how uh, governments can better run um, the, the monetary system for the benefit of the people that they're supposed to represent. And, yeah, you all you have to do is go to, to, to Google and type in mon- modern monetary theory and you can get all the information you need about it. it you know, it, it's something you have to think about, but, it, 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 you know, it's, it's, um, it's um, I think, the proper approach to, to, to economics. Ed, uh, you, you'd like to know the uh, NDP actually has a Bank of Canada policy and it was uh, in their platform in 2004 and six. Uh, just check it out. They do have a talk about that. And the Green Party also has the Bank of Canada monetary policy as well. So it's out there. We just need to keep reminding people about it. Thanks yeah. for your support. And, and, yeah. and people should understand that, you know, the, the, the so-called national yep. debt is actually a national credit. Um, the federal government, being the uh, monopoly supplier of, of, of money in Canada, could pay down the entire national debt, not that I'm advocating that because I think it would be a bad idea, but could pay it down overnight by simply writing a check. Ed, thanks, uh, thanks for the call. All right, bye-bye. All right. What have, you, uh, what have you been doing personally since the election, Mr. Porter? Well, I had a dramatic change in my life last year, and I left an industry of 21 years. So I was trying to uh, get some work here because I do have a family and uh, bills Got to pay. Bills, yeah. Yeah, and uh, ended up at uh, Wheaton GM and uh, stayed there for a couple months and just left it um, and to get ready for this by-election. All right. You, you were telling me off the air a little story about an experience. Yeah, on the it, lot, uh, it? it was. It's always interesting. A lot you meet lots of different people, and you never know who's going to show up. And uh, lo and behold, one day I look up, and there's Randall Garrison <laughs> <laughs> looking for. Her. And I said, "Hello, sir. It's an honor to meet you again, and congratulations. I hadn't seen him since the election." And he's like, "Oh my goodness, you're here." I said, "Yes, I still got to pay the bills, and uh, you have the job at the uh, big house, and I'm, <laughs> I need to still work." And so it was neat because we could uh, uh, rehat. And, and to, to be honest, it was the day that uh, Jack Layden made his announcement. 
but he was uh in a and and so it was a very yeah sober moment yeah Yeah. both you know it's uh Gary garrison did buy the car from yes he he did say you're not the guy (laughs) i want to deal with exactly no it's uh you know you have a car lot and you have a car salesman and two politicians and uh we all trusted each other and we're (laughs) open and transparent and accountable and that's uh why i'm happy he won as well he's a great guy and very honest and very open and it's uh exciting times for for our area. I think that's a neat story. Yeah. One candidate buys a car for him. That's, that's, that's wonderful. All right. Christopher Porter Maybe is shouldn't. a leader of Canadian Action Party, and uh, he is going to be uh, seeking a Toronto seat in the House of Commons when the, now the by-election hasn't been called yet. Uh, no. It's the earliest yeah. it can be is called is August 17th, but we're, we know yeah, it's so going to be it's called. Way, uh, it's yeah. months and months away. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, good.